honored guests, and brand new physicians. In the words of Lady Gaga, <laughs> let's have some fun. <laughs> to kick things off, I've chosen to give this speech in the style of medical education. The first half will be part lecture, part small group discussion. <laughs> with the occasional comments make it all relevant to the dental students. <laughs> and for the second half, I will yell at you and throw scalpels. <laughs> but let's go back to the beginning. Four years ago, remember we were jumping through the final hoops of the pre-med rat race? We submitted our med school applications and then we resubmitted them when the UBC application website crashed. <laughs> and then we waited. Seven months later, we got the letter saying we were pre-meds, no longer. We were finally part of the UBC Faculty of Medicine, founded in 1950, the year Steve Lapari turned 55 years old. <laughs> research labs, even in police labs. There's engineers, politicians, and business people, and kick-ass dancers. And all 224 of us have type A personalities. Other than that, we really only had one thing in common. We were all waiting for someone to tap us on the shoulder and say, sorry there's been an error, you did not actually get into medical school. This is where I had a joke about med all, but fortunately Jazz has already made that joke this morning. Um, if there's one thing that I've learned in med school other than deleting 300 emails a day, it was how to party. Those whole first two years, Dad, Mom, don't listen to this part. <laughs> Ski trips, weepers, a camping trip with a mysteriously disappearing ham, a little too much med cest, and uh, Pat Hack dancing with cougars. <laughs> Between intramurals and partying and sushi, I can't believe we actually survived the intense academics and all the questions from the island. <laughs> After seven exams and three days, it can be really hard to be specific. <laughs> I swear, some of us started to wonder what we'd gotten into by the 200th brain slice on our neuroanatomy final. Yes, the preclinical years were difficult. Well, that's what we thought before clerkship. Ah, uh, third year. What can I say about third year without sounding cynical? Well, in fourth year, <laughs> third year was truly about transformation. We walked into those hospitals as students who could memorize a 300 slide lecture on antibiotics but we didn't know how to make an IV pump stop beeping. <laughs> I remember my first time trying to order IV fluids. I couldn't figure out the simple task until somebody finally gave me a hand. She was so helpful. And then she went back to sweeping the floor. <laughs> it really did seem like everyone else in the hospital knew way more than we did. By the end of three years of the BFMP though, things had changed. We learned to include scorpion bite in our differential for pancreatitis. <laughs> We learned how to survive pimping. By the way, mom, pimping in medical school is not what you think. It's much worse. We learned how to write a three-hour board exam on a 10-inch square table at a women's hospital. We learned to avoid the nurses and emerge at St. Paul's. A couple of tears there. We learned to always use Fife and to never use FLK. You know what, come to think of it, we learned way too many three-letter acronyms. Or should I say TLAs? I don't even think we use real words anymore. In fact, it's just like the patient last month at VGH who came in with back pain. He had ST elevation and low O2 sats, BP of 16, a flat JVP, and the MSI figured he'd blown a triple A. <laughs> Post off in ICU though, he had looked, we got VT and got cardio to MSR with F and 200 joules and amyo to 150 MGIV from the CC4 and the IMR5 working under an FRCBC MD in CCU. <laughs> Surgery elective. <laughs> Fourth year was when we started to feel 
feel like we actually knew things. And in the middle, there was that nice five-week vacation known as PMP. PMP also came with a very helpful antibiotics review. The same 300-slide lecture from first year. And to round it all off, fourth year brought our favorite acronym of all, CARMS. Everyone had their own fascinating description of how this algorithmic process works. Something along the lines of a mystical, computerized black box. Funny thing is, that's exactly how I describe the LMCC. But today, today we are med students no longer. We've been faced with the tough questions. Will my grandmother ever walk again? Why isn't my baby crying? As tough as med school was, we slowly began learning the answers to these questions. Moms and dads, even though we'll always be your babies, we finally turned into real doctors. Mm -hmm. We couldn't have made it on our own, but before I start wrapping up and thanking the many people we owe it to, because this is Vancouver, of course we have to do a three second yoga break. <laughs> tree, tree pose? Okay, good. Back to the top. Richard Ng, are you still awake? <laughs> on behalf of the class, thanks to the deans of the student affairs for caring about our sanity. Thanks to the entire class council and grad planning committee for the events this week. Thank you to our outstanding faculty speaker today, Dr. Jason Ford. We're all looking forward to his talk today. By the way, I know you're a blood doctor, but you really need to stop inviting me to watch Twilight with you. <laughs> Thanks to our most influential PBL tutors, Dr. Google and Dr. Wikipedia. <laughs> Additionally, I'd like to thank the DPAS program directors. After all, you did succeed in teaching us the true meaning of suffering. <laughs> thank you to our families for being with us and supporting us over the years. We could not have done it without you. Especially those of you crazy enough to marry a medical student. <laughs> I hope you got something to eat in the lobby, even if you had to shove a grandma or two. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I'm not the class of Rhodes Scholar like Jazz, or I don't have a Hember Award like Yara does, you've given me the incredible honor of representing and reminiscing today. So I'd like to thank you and give back to you one last thing, a piece of advice. Never trust drug companies. Those rascals will find a way to sponsor anything. You would not, you would not believe how much Pfizer would have given me if I simply said, their evidence shows Libertor is far superior to competition. <laughs> Actually, what I'd really like to give back to you today is, is those two words exactly, give back. May I recommend we give back to our outstanding teachers by becoming outstanding teachers ourselves. After all, that's what the word doctor means, to teach. In five weeks, we will be the residents that can make the lives of med students so much easier. <laughs> give back to the other members of the team, physicians and non-physicians alike. I know every single one of us has learned at least one thing from nurse, RT, physio, or pharmacist. And give back to your patients. You know, I was stunned to read in the newspaper that taxpayers pay UBC $60,000 per year per medical student on top of our tuition. So society is indeed giving us a front row seat. No, they're giving us a major role in the drama featuring the extremes of the human condition, whether we choose to care for patients locally or internationally. So never forget who paid most of our tuition, and never forget who our employers are. Sure, we've earned the letters MD after our names today, but we must never stop trying to earn the respect of our patients, colleagues, and students. Yep, tomorrow we can start giving back. Today is about us, though. <laughs> Classmates, after years of hard work, dozens of exams, thousands of hours of studying, and countless lectures on professionalism, <laughs> We finally have our degrees from this morning. Aren't they beautiful? They serve to prove to the world that according to the Faculty of Medicine at UBC, each and every one of us knows absolutely everything there is to know about medicine. <laughs> and surely we'll be getting a symbolic wooden shingle from the faculty so that if anybody disputes that fact, 
We can bash them over the head with our shingles. I think that's what they're for. Either way, class of 2010, we are now physicians ready to practice medicinous exquisites. Give yourselves a hand. You've earned it. Congratulations.